go through. This is 3.1 if you're going to follow along with the unit three stuff. There's going to be the Pythagorean theorem, and then I'm going to simplify radicals while doing the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem is a formula, but it relates to the lengths of the sides, and I want to highlight it is only the sides. It has nothing to do with the angles. The Pythagorean theorem is all about the sides. Okay, and you can only use it in a right triangle. So you know you have a right triangle if there's a right angle. Can you pause that? So in a right triangle, you have a right angle. So you have a couple of options. So let's say we had a triangle like this. I could have a right angle marking. It doesn't have to be facing that way. Another option, let's say you had a triangle and you knew that this was 30 degrees and you knew this was 60 degrees, the triangle sum theorem says the triangle has 180 degrees in it. So you could say this is 30 and 60 is 90, take that away from 180, and then I know this is a 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle is a right angle, so I have a right triangle, because I can only use the Pythagorean theorem in right triangles. And the only thing I'm trying to solve for are sides, only for sides, okay? The only time you're going to use the angle is to determine if you have a right triangle. So Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. This prefix hypo, does anybody know another word that starts with hypo? Hypo hypothermia. What does that mean? Very cold. Yeah, very cold. HYP is like a lot. Hypotonic, hyperactive. So hy the hypotenuse is going to be the biggest side. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. And it's going to be across from the 90 degree angle. We learned a little while ago. The um, largest side is across from the largest angle, and the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. So the hypotenuse is always going to be across from the 90 degree angle because that is going to be the biggest angle in the triangle. Arbitrarily, we're going to use letters A and B for legs, and C is always going to be the letter we use for the hypotenuse. So we use X as like a variable, but A, B, and C are going to be the sides for the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem says, in a right triangle has to be right, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs, which is this formula here. You might also see this formula written as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It doesn't matter which way you write it, but c has to be the hypotenuse, and c is always alone on one side of the equation. So it's always on its own side of the equation. And remember, it has to be a right triangle. Really important. So in order to solve these side lengths, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I know I can use the Pythagorean theorem because I have a right angle, a right angle, a right angle, which means all triangles are right triangles. So for this first one, I want to determine where is my hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle, so my x is going to be my hypotenuse. And this next one, my right angle is here, so across from that is z. z is my hypotenuse. And then this last one, across from my right angle, my hypotenuse is going to be 13. Okay, that's the one that's across from the right angle. So if I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I'm just going to plug in the values I have for each one and solve. So here, x is my hypotenuse, so I'm going to write it as x squared. I have to square every term equals the legs. I can either use 3 as the a and 4 as the b, or, three, or 4 as the a and 3 as the b. It doesn't matter which side I use. It doesn't matter the order. So this one, I'm just going to do 3 squared plus 4 squared. So to set up this equation, I already determined that z is my hypotenuse, so I'm going to have z squared equals, and I have these congruent markings, so I know this side is 10. So this is going to be 10 squared plus 10 squared. The last triangle, 13 is my hypotenuse, so 13 squared equals y squared plus 5 squared. Now, if you follow the order of operations to solve all these, if you follow the order of operations, we a lot of times use PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So in the formula, I don't have any parentheses to worry about. Next step is exponents. 
x squared, I can't do anything with that, so I'm going to simplify 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. So this still equals x squared. And then I don't have multiplication or division, so I'm going to add x. Combine like terms. x squared equals 25. I'm just going to get to this point for all three equations, and then I'll talk about um, how to solve. Yeah? Why does the, the last one have to be c? Just like uh, postulate. So the form, the theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, says c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and the hypotenuse is we're just arbitrarily using letter c, but that one's always by itself. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. So then, the next one I'm going to do z squared equals ten squared, which is hundred plus hundred. So z squared equals 200. And then here we've got 13 squared, which is 169, equals y squared plus 25. Anybody have any questions at this point? So just like you usually solve for a variable, y squared, I'm going to get that alone. So I would subtract 25 from both sides, and I get 144 equals y squared. Pause that because that's Pythagorean theorem.